Hey, it's Big Al, and I want to show you something I've been working on the past couple weeks. Uh, I have it all here. It arrived in the mail, and uh, just let me pull it out and show you what it is. I got two packages. All right, first package here. Ornamental turf category 3a comes with this uh, book uh, ornamental pest management uh, it comes with this book turf pest management these two came together and then I have applying pesticides correctly and uh, it's a pretty thick book there. And then that also comes with a letter, some kind of letter, a table of contents, um, my receipt. This cost me like $50, I think. Both these books cost um, $50 together, not a piece. Uh, here is a testing schedule. Answer sheet. Uh, license application. Pre-addressed uh, envelope. Written test. There's uh, 50 questions on this test. Uh, and then the book. So you might be wondering what I'm doing with all this. Well, I have about five acres of land and I wanted to learn how to uh, do my own weed control, pest control, uh, and insect control. I currently have it done by a company. I've been using the same company for years, uh, probably close to 10 years now. If I have to guess, I'm probably looking at a plot of land that's probably 60 feet by 60 feet. Uh, that's just a rough estimate, but it really only covers just the very front of my front yard, just uh, just very close to the house and hardly anything in the backyard. You're looking at probably like a five foot strip on the backyard. Um, so it's really not that much. The guy's done a really great job. I really don't have any complaints. We've used them for years but now I have five acres and um, I wanna do more. Uh, I don't know that I'll get all of the acreage, but I want everything around my house um, within a decent walking distance to be nice and lush and green and not full of weeds. Um, everything up to my house that's just generally around my house um, is in pretty good shape, but um, when you go out uh, too far, um, you run into a lot of weeds and when you drive up on my house you can see all the weeds so probably my focus area is going to be uh, a nice distance around the house and then the edge the perimeter of the of the land uh, so that way when you're driving up to it, it it looks as nice as possible i don't know that i'll get all five acres but i know that if i study i take the test and uh, I do it myself and I purchase my own material that um, I can get a lot more for my money. So that's the plan. That's why I'm studying about um, applying pesticides and herbicides correctly. And I've learned a lot. There's a lot to it. There's a lot more to it than I initially thought. Um, so initially I thought in order to get the professional chemicals that um, that commercial businesses use, you had to have a commercial license. And um, that's not the case. And also a lot of what the professional professionals use um, are not restricted chemicals. They're actually open to public. I didn't know that before I ordered all this material, um, but let me walk you through it a little bit. So there's three different categories. Uh, there's a commercial license, there's a non-commercial license, and there's a private applicator's license. 
the commercial is if you want to run a business, if you want to have a business where you're applying pesticides, herbicides, weed control, um, insecticides, all of that stuff, termite control, um, if you're going to do work with um, farm and cattle and, and crops, uh, that's all commercial application. If you're going to do that as a business and you're going to get paid for it, then you have to have a commercial license. And in order to get that license, you have to uh, go to your local state ag, ag department and take a test. So here, here is the testing schedule for Oklahoma. And you can see they offer it in all different kinds of counties and they tell you the location and the date and it looks like they offer it at least once a month sometimes twice a month in certain locations but at least once a month uh, you can go down to your state department your ag department and test for your license now um, there's a lot of license uh, licenses out there the first one is a general license and that basically covers, it's, it's step number one. It says that you know how to safely and properly use these chemicals. Uh, so you gotta take that test first. Then there's category licenses. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them. I don't know exactly how many. I can look it up real quick. Okay, maybe it wasn't that quick. But um, let's see, I'll just count them real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. There's 25 different categories that you can test on. So the general um, is your basics. And then once you have your general, then you could go down to categories. So having your general pretty much doesn't give you the ability to do anything. You have to now go into each category that you want to get certified in, and then that's what allows you to, to use these chemicals for that particular application. Um, so a couple of them, predatory animal control, bird and vertebrae, animal pest, cooling towers, homeowner timber treatment, nursery greenhouse, right away category, general pest control, structural pest control, fumigation. Uh, it's just a whole lot. The, the only one that I was interested in right now is um, called ornamental and turf outdoor pest control. It's categorized as a 3A test. Um, and that's the one that allows you to spray herbicides and pesticides on your yard basically weed control on your own on your yard or anybody else's yard and that's what these uh, two books here are so if you want to start your own uh, weed control business um, you have to figure out where to get these books uh, for, here in Oklahoma. These come from um, Oklahoma State University, their library section. Um, I was given a number. I called them. They told me which, what I'm going to do, what books I need. Uh, I paid them over the phone and they mailed them. They showed up in two days. And these are the these are your study guides. Once you have your study guides, then you have to study. Uh, then you go down to your state department. You take the test. Once you pass the test, then you submit your application for your license, and then you get your license, and once you have your license, then you're open to do business. Now, the second category is called a non-commercial, and um, that one is used more for, I believe, uh, like academics, or if you're going to be studying and applying um, these chemicals, or if you're going to be taking care of um, like a golf course or a football field or a soccer field or a college course and you're not really doing it for a business you're doing it um, because it's part of your job or uh, because you're going to be handling these chemicals without actually uh, for profit I guess you could say and so that would be a non-commercial license 
and that's pretty much the exact same process I didn't see much difference from the the commercial and the non-commercial um, categories the third one is called a private applicators uh, license uh, or certification and that's what I'm going after so that's what this book is uh, applying pesticides correctly a guide for private oh actually this covers all of them so this is a guide for private commercial non-commercial and service technician applicators so that's another thing if you're gonna work for a company and you're gonna do this on behalf of a company you still have to go take this test you have to get a uh, license um, in any category that you're gonna be spraying plus the general so the reason why I decided to go with the private applicators is because uh, I'm only doing my own yard. Uh, private applicator is designed for, uh, they say, ranchers or farmers. And um, if you're only going to be spraying your own yard, that's really all you have to do is, is uh, to get this license so that you can buy restricted chemicals. Now, what I learned is that a lot of the chemicals that are being used for weed control are not restricted. So I actually didn't have to go through this process in the first place, but um, it was educational. I learned something. It was actually kind of fun. Um, I got to go up and down through this book and learn a lot about uh, herbicides and pesticides and safety precautions and proper application. Um, I didn't get too much into this one because uh, I don't have to test on this one because I am doing my own yard because I'm a private applicator. I don't actually have to test in the categories. Uh, I only have to test if I'm going to be doing this commercially. So I'll keep this stuff on hand. I'll pull it out if I need to, but right now it seems like I'm not going to really need it too much. A big reason why I went with the private applicator and not the commercial uh, is because in order to apply for the license on a commercial, you have to have a registered business, a business name, a registered location for your business, and you have to have insurance. And so you have to provide all of that with your applications for license. So if you're applying for a commercial uh, applicator's license, you can't apply for it as an individual. I, I can't apply for it and get certif and certify myself or get the license for myself the license belongs to the business, to the company. And then I would have to apply and certify as a service technician if I wanted to hold that credential myself. Now, as, the, as a business owner, I could still uh, apply those chemicals, I could purchase those, and I could apply those chemicals on behalf of, this, of the business. But if I was to hire anybody else, then they would have to go and take these tests and get certified uh, to do it for me. And I didn't want to get crazy with it. I didn't want to purchase insurance. I didn't want to start up a business just to spray my own yard. And I really don't want to make any money off of this. Uh, there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of guys that know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a long time. And it's just not something that really interests me as far as getting into. Can you make money off of it? Sure. I'm sure you can make a lot of money and do very well. But um, just like anything else, it's all about your network and it's all about the clientele that you build up and the name that you create for yourself. And uh, that's an uphill battle and I just wasn't interested in doing that. Uh, what I am interested in is spraying my own yard and saving myself a lot of money and having a really nice yard. And I can spray other yards. The thing is, is as a private applicator, I can't do it for money. I can do it for trade. So if I spray another yard, uh, we can trade or barter or whatever the case may be, uh, but I can't uh, accept any money for it. And I'm fine with that. I've got some neighbors around here and I might work out a deal with them. I'll spray their yard, they're close by, and we'll see, I don't know. But I'm not too concerned with it. I'm really just concerned with doing my own property. So once you get your booklet, and again, I really didn't need this one. Uh, I have it just in case, but this is really the only one that you need. 
and it comes with uh, application. My application's already uh, filled out, and you submit your application with your answer sheet and twenty dollars. Here is my answer sheet. So I've completed my answer sheet, it's good to go. Here's my envelope, put this all in here, $20 check. And here is my test. So this is an open book test, uh, they send it to you, you take it on your own time, your free will, and they give you the, the questions, a multiple choice, all of them are multiple choice, and then you look for the answers inside your book. And I really thought this was going to be a piece of cake. I didn't think this was going to be very difficult at all. I mean, we've all done this in high school and college, and and um, it's usually a pretty simple process. But I was surprised at how tough this actually was. The questions aren't hard um, per se, but you want to make sure they're right. And uh, you have to go in the book and look for the answer. And when you're looking for one answer in this entire book, uh, it does become pretty difficult. So here's a good good one right here. Question number two. A 24C registration is what? Okay, well, I've never heard of a 24C registration. I don't know what those numbers stand for. And finding exactly where 24C in this book is, um, is tough. And in like school textbooks, usually you can go back to the index and you can look for you know, maybe 24C or categories or something like that. And it will usually kind of get you in the general area. And these questions are not designed that way. They um, they make them tough to find intentionally. And, uh, and they do word them a little bit differently. There was one that was worded and the key word there was at least. And, and they were talking about a threshold and it said at least this threshold. Well, it made it very difficult to find um, that answer in the book because it never in the book it never gives you what the threshold is it just it just tells you what the minimum is uh, so I was I was in the right section I actually had to call uh, Oklahoma State and talk to somebody to figure out what I was doing wrong and they informed me that it's all about the wording they kind of they kind of walked me through the wording and then once they explained the wording to me, I was looking right at it. I was in the right area. And once I understood the wording, then I could figure out what the what the right answer was. So um, there was only one of those that was that was pretty difficult. But the rest of them, they're not hard answers. They're just difficult to find the exact right answer in the book. So I've been working on this for uh, probably about three weeks now. Just doing it an hour here, an hour there, uh, a little bit of time, uh, whenever I could, and I finished it today. So there's 50 questions. I got it done today. I'm going to get this mailed off. I'm going to get my license in the mail, private applicator certification. So at the end of the test, uh, they give you a label and the last um, like 10 to 12 questions, you have to go into this label and find the answers. Uh, and this is a real product. This is Grazen P plus D made by Dow Agro Sciences. Uh, I did a little bit of research on this and um, supposedly it's a really good product. It's, it's a standard product that farmers use, uh, but they don't make it anymore. The patents ended on this, so the company makes what's called Grazen Next. That's what they're marketing. But and, but you don't have to have a license for the Grazen Next. You do have to have a, a license for this uh, this P plus D. The P I think stands for Paclorum. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. But that that chemical Paclorum is what mandates you have a uh, an applicator's license. That's what makes this chemical restricted. Now there are some other companies that are now making it um, as a as a generic brand. I think one's called Trooper. I think one's called Paclorum Plus D. And uh, I might look into that. I might look into buying one of those, trying to get my hands on one of those. Uh, it'll just make me feel a lot better about going through this whole process. I don't want to feel like I did this for nothing. Um, at a minimum, I educated myself. I learned. I got a license. Uh, and I'd feel better if I can at least purchase uh, maybe just one chemical that's restricted just to say I did it So I'll look into it. It's supposed to be really good stuff And I'll try and uh, get a hold of it and see how, how it works for me
Okay, I've got my uh, my envelope, my answer sheet, my application. I just got to get my twenty bucks in here. There it is, on my way to getting my private applicator's license. Wish me luck. If uh, you have any advice or comments or tips, tricks, uh, any information you can give me, go ahead and drop that down in the comments. Uh, like I said, I'm new to this, I'm completely new, so there's a lot for me to learn. Um, the next thing I gotta start looking into is the equipment, what kind of equipment I need to use. Uh, I don't, uh, right now I think I'm gonna go with the backpack uh, application, the backpack tank. I think it gets me about three to four gallons. Eventually, I'd like to get like a, a little trailer set up, uh, something that I could hook up to the back of a lawnmower. And I've looked at everything. I've looked at, at spray pump cans all the way to uh, tractor attachments uh, that, that, that run off your PTO. Uh, those are, you're looking at two to four grand on a, on a tractor attachment. I'm not trying to get that crazy right now. A backpack sprayer, you're looking at anywhere from fifty dollars to three hundred dollars and um, the two that I've seen that are most common are a pump style it's got a little hand, uh, lever on the handle or le handle off to the side that you pump but I hear that those can wear you out pretty fast um, there's another one that's an electric driven it's got a small electric motor on it that'll spray uh, but those look kind of cheap it looks like it would break uh, I haven't seen but Probably ideal would be something that I could uh, compress or use compressed air with. I've got a uh, air compressor in the garage, so if I could fill it up with a liquid and then um, use my air compressor to compress it and spray the yard that way, uh, that might be pretty nice. But um, I haven't seen if they make anything like that or not. So I'm still I'm still looking into all this stuff. I'm still learning. Uh, there are four main chemicals that, I, uh, that I've researched that I need to do my yard. One is a pre-emergent, one is a herbicide, um, one is uh, a surfactant, and then uh, the dye. So the pre-emergent uh, kills the weeds before they, before they bloom, uh, before they even start. A herbicide uh, kills your broadleaf, your, your weeds that have already grown. And uh, the surfactant, acts like a kind of like a glue or a sticky um, uh, chemical that helps the that helps the other two chemicals stick to the ground um, so that they don't get washed out and then the dye is just so that you could see the area that you've hit so you get a nice even coverage on your yard those are the four chemicals that I'm looking at um, now it's all about the brand now that I know what four chemicals I need, now I'm looking at what brands I need. And so that's where I'm, my research is now, and then the equipment. So uh, for right now, I'm gonna get a backpack sprayer. In the future, I'm gonna look at some type of trailer type attachment, maybe even making something myself, who knows? So stay tuned for those videos. I'll be making more videos about how I spray, uh, how I mix the chemicals, uh, maybe if I get a trailer build in there or some type of uh, equipment set up, that'd be a pretty pretty uh, cool video. So I'm just now getting on my journey to uh, spraying my own stuff. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you've ever thought about doing it yourself. And drop your advice in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and all your feedback. Stay tuned for our future application videos.